You guys are really in store for a treat tonight. And I know it's a, that's like cliche, but um, I had a chance to meet this guy out in uh, South by Southwest. And I saw him perform in Minneapolis, and he is just incredible. Probably one of the most slept on people uh, uh, this year, and he's going to really shock the hip hop world. And um, before I bring him, bring him out, I just want you to know that at a hip hop event, it's, it's a lot of energy. Now, I know they're playing with the computers in the back and everything like that, but you know, we need energy as it pertains to hip hop, okay? So before I bring him out, a fashion forward young man, they got me up here with him, he's gonna be like Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> a, a, a lover of music and a style connoisseur. But we're gonna do this hip hop style, cool? So when I say G, you say easy. G! Easy! G! Easy! G! Easy! Ladies and gentlemen, G, easy. Good evening, sir. Y'all know what I mean. Hey, Bay Area talk. So, so I, I was actually telling folks before you came out that um, when I saw you at South by Southwest, I saw you first because, you know, I know a lot of ladies in the house, and, and, and when they see you, you, they, they, you, you you're, a, uh, you're a presence when they see you. So, you know what I said? I, I, I was like... Uh, you're like, man, this guy can't rap. I was, I was like Nino Brown in, in, in New Jack City. He's a pretty mother... You know? <laughs> But you showed a skill set in hip hop that was just incredible. And, and I said, you know what? This guy is, 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 uh, is slept on. Do you feel like that, you know, as, um, you know, as you drop this album? I mean, of course. But every, I kind of feel like every rapper in the world has a chip on their shoulder. Like, I think it's something about hip hop and the ego that comes with hip hop is like, I'm the rawest rapper alive. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and that's just a part of it. If you don't feel like you're the best, then, then what are you doing? You know, but that's like, it comes with, you know what I mean? And, and so naturally, you feel like, yo, why am I not Jay-Z yet? Uh -huh. But in the big picture of things, it's like, it's all a process, you know? So uh, uh, these things happen is number one on a hip-hop iTunes chart. Yeah. And it's number two overall. Um, can you just give us the process as it pertains to, you know, uh, putting this project together? Um, well, I, uh, it's a little different, man. I'm like, mm -hmm. in the past, I'd done all my own production. You know, I mean, typically how, how a record comes together is a producer will bring a track. Sometimes the hook is even on there and you just kind of fill the blanks, you know, whatever. But um, I've always, I was a producer even before I was a rapper. Yeah. You know, so it starts, it starts with the music most of the time. Sometimes it'll be a lyric or two in my head and I'll just build the track around that. But this time around, uh, a good friend of mine, Christoph Anderson. Yeah, heavy on the album. Co-produced. <laughs> Shouts out to Stoff. Uh, Co-produced the whole album with me. <clears throat> so, you know, it starts, it's, it's, it's like from start to finish, we craft the songs from thin air. And I think at the end of the day, like that's why I'm so in love with music is that phenomenon of something that didn't exist at all mm -hmm. that, that we have the capacity to create out of thin air and make this song and then give it to the internet and you guys listen to it and that's dope you know what I mean like that's crazy so it you know with this whole you know idea of you know you just coming up on the scene number one number two you know you know people would think you're coming out of nowhere can you tell us the G-Eazy story? You know, we saw a little bit of the story in, 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 in the Far Alone video, but can you just tell us your story? Well, any, any, any like overnight sensation or any out of nowhere, who the fuck is this guy mm -hmm. type of thing is always like years and years and years in the world. And especially with us because everything is so organic and so homemade and so DIY. And so, you know, so this started when I was 13. Yeah. First making beats and first writing raps, you know, and learning how to structure songs and how to record and how to do all that. And um, and it was just me and the homies. It was just like, yo, like it was like a competitive thing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We would freestyle and battle each other at lunchtime or whatever. This is would, in Oakland. Yeah. Yeah. Oakland and Berkeley. And we would all just, you know, we saved up our money and we got a we got a mic and um, we'd all catch the bus after school and we go to my house and we would record. 
Yeah. And we would just work on music all day, every day, until my moms would be like, y'all got to go. Mm-hmm. And kick them out. Um, and uh, it was just something instantly that I fell in love with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, nothing when changed. It, it's well, like, well, 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 you know, the, the irony when I heard you, you come from Oakland, because Oakland has a distinct sound. You know, you got yeah. your, you know, from your two shorts to your... To your uh, um, Kick the Sneak. Kick the Sneak to... To uh, 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 E40s, it's just that 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 uh, that hyphy sound. Yeah. So, even though you hear a little bit of that in Far you yeah. know, why didn't you gravi- gravitate totally to that sound? You know, and, and kind of right. fit the niche of the bay. <laughs> well, that sound that was all I was making in high school. Okay. Every single beat I made sounded like, you know what I mean, a rip off of "Tell Me When to Go." <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, you know, that was I, I think growing up in the bay, there's a real pride. <coughs> for you know the local music there and the culture and the energy and all that and then I moved to New Orleans for college mm-hmm. shout and that's to New where Orleans. yeah shouts out to Nola and uh that's where the I, I think that's really what opened my eyes and the sound started to expand and I mean I mean half of it is college you know what I mean like you're there with meeting new people from around <laughs> the country yeah like everybody you meet is from a different place mm-hmm. and I wanted to play everybody the hyphy stuff I grew up on, and they want to play the stuff that, you know what I mean, from where they're from, whatever. You know, you share everything. And like, uh, and then just living in the city of New Orleans. And this is when Lil Wayne was red hot. Mm-hmm. You know, and he was my favorite rapper at the time. And, and it was like, you know, just just the culture down there and the energy and just Southern hip hop and just soaking all that up, you know? Yeah. You know what's crazy? And, and, and when I heard the, um, when I had a chance to listen to the album, you know, so so many times in hip hop, everybody wants to put everybody in a box, a niche. How would you describe your sound? You know, to 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 the world, like because because this doesn't fit in a box. Nah. None of this stuff fits in a box. But the thing is, that's where the world is now. Mm-hmm. You know, the game has changed. It's evolved, and the internet has a lot to do with that. But the walls of genres have been broken down. Mm-hmm. Everything is genre bending, and you know what I mean. Yeah. And there's space for more. You know, you don't have to fit the format of radio and sound exactly like what was hot six months ago to be relevant now. You do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. And if you put it out and people like it, then you got your own movement. And, yeah. and you don't have to follow no rules. You can make whatever you want to make and take whatever you're inspired by and pull it all together. Like, Far Alone was a record for me that was like, yo, like, I needed to reconnect with that hyphy energy, but blend it and mix it with where the sound had 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 gone. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So you have this this very foggy, atmospheric, the pads, the the XX guitar. You know what I mean? Flooded with reverb, and then you got hyphy drums. Yeah. You know, and that's that's not following no rules, no format. You know what I mean? To sound exactly like whatever's on the radio. That's just me saying, you know, I want. This and this and this and this put in a pot and stir it all up and make it. And if people like it, then cool. Yeah. And and another thing I love about the album is it's not too feature heavy. Yeah. You know, it, it has a few strategic features. that's also because, you know, being our whole how we came into this, you know, mm-hmm. it's not like... I'm on the radio all day, and I'm all over TV, and I'm a well, superstar. Well, you are on Sirius XM <laughs> Hip Hop Nation all day. <laughs> well, with that being said, you know, I can't just call up any A-lister on the phone like, yo, I need a verse. They'll be like, who the hell are you? Yeah. So it's like, you know, we reached out to 40, and, and that made sense. You know, mm-hmm. that, that for me, like, there's no greater moment in my career than, than hearing E-40s voice yeah. on my record back and up like being a sea crab <laughs> so and then and then with the ferg record it's like i met rocky a long time ago and and met them and uh you know just kept in touch or whatever and just reached out like yo like now's the time like i need i need a favor you know do you do you fuck with this song and he loved it and he jumped on it and it was it wasn't like you know let me have every a-lister in the game to try to sell my album because i couldn't yeah. You know what I mean? And we had to, you know, make do. And it they was gonna like, start calling now. Though. But the thing is, but the thing is, I feel like, with regards to collaborations, mm-hmm. I feel like <sighs> I hate how so 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 much of the time it's like politically motivated. It's like, oh, I'm friends with so and so. I could probably get a verse from them. You know, if the song doesn't make sense, didn't, then don't ever fit. do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, and that's how that's how I felt with this album. It was like, you know. Yeah, and I, and I feel like when you know the, the the world here, 
these things happen, they, they're going to see that the, the album is really sequenced nice. Well, that's a big thing to me, man. I mean, it's a clean the listen. concept of an album, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just uh, flowing from track one all the way to the end and having a kind of consistent thread, a consistent aesthetic and feel and sound and vibe is really important. I think Illmatic and 2001 are probably the two greatest hip hop albums ever made and they both have that. You mm -hmm. know, it's like without being just linear like this, yeah. there's an extremely consistent sound and feel to both of those albums and it's like if you put on either of those albums, it's not something you could just listen to a song and just walk away. You know what I mean? Like you're sitting down for that hour to listen to the album cuz that's and that's what I wanted to do with this. That's what I always strive with every project, but this one I feel like we accomplished that. Yeah. You know? And I, and, I, and I just applaud you on being a producer and an artist. You you strictly um, you you had a hand in producing about four or five songs on the album, a outside of the the, the other stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, you know, I was um you know just just thinking you know the uh, Billboard magazine calling you the the young Elvis, <laughs> you know and and um you know some people in all of these New York Times and all these critical critical acclaims that are coming your way. Do you feel like the the hip hop world has embraced you fully, and uh, is that one of your motivating factors? You know, like with, I just talked to Sway on the phone. Oh yeah, a minute ago, friend of mine. Yeah, and he's shown nothing but love. And and to me, Sway is Yoda mm -hmm. to this world. <laughs> period. And uh, I was like, Kanye, how are you gonna disrespect Yoda? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like. You know, he, 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 he was like, bro, I'm so proud of you. You know, you're killing it. And we talked about the sound set that he hosted in the yeah. festival. And he was just like, man, like, you've got it. Like, you know, I'm just, I'm so happy to see you winning. And, and that to me, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't care what nobody else said. If Sway said I'm good, then I'm good. But you know what? And, and that's a great thing. Shout out to Sway. Here's the thing, though. There's a vetting process for people like Sway. Yeah. You know, they don't just let anybody just come into the game. That's what I say. It's like everybody can't just wake up and be Yoda. Sway yeah. is really Yoda. Yeah. And you Jedi Master. And, and, and they, he gave you his uh, stamp of approval as a lyricist. You know, and, and um, you know, on the album, there's a song called Opportunity Cost. Yeah. And it hit me. I'm, I'm sitting there listening to it. And I asked you, was it that your mother on the end of the song? Yeah, that was mom's. And that was like, that was just, I had... Um, I was, it was a crazy week. I was in New York doing tons of press and all this, you know, and I hadn't even talked to her in a minute, and I just called her real quick to catch her up or whatever, and she was like, yo, I got to go, uh, you know, I, I got to do something or whatever. She had to make dinner or something, I don't know. And uh, I was like, all right, all right, whatever. And it was like five minutes, and she called back later that night, and I missed the call, and she left that voicemail, and I was just, I was like, yo, that's the realest shit ever. I had to put that on a song. But, you know, as I was listening to the song, I just thought about, you know, the price that I had to pay to be, you know, in, in the environment that I'm in. So I just, you know, I, I said, damn, when I, when I get a chance to interview him, I want to ask him, like, you know, what are some of the costs that you paid to uh, be here in New York City tonight at this Apple store, you know, uh, uh, yeah. at, you know, this grand opening, of your, uh, you know, this release of your album and yeah. everything. What are some of the costs that you had to pay to be here? Everything, man. I mean, from the jump, it was like, yo, we didn't have no... You know, <laughs> we didn't have no money to do this. You know, this was like I had to have a job since I was like 13 and saved everything to be able to get some mm -hmm. studio equipment to even make songs. And then it was like, you know, going to college and, and I had a great scholarship in a situation, but it was like, all right, I'm going to take this risk because mom said I should do it. And going to college and, and, then, and then getting to school and being like, yo, everybody I met, you know, has money and doesn't really care about school and they're going out to party every night and Loyola you know costs. what I mean? Loyola Loyola costs costs. Big time. And and I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm staying in I'm in the dorm to work on music. Like I traded in the social life for that. Like mm -hmm. let me just nerd out in my dorm room and just make beats, you know? Yeah. And uh, you know, and then and then to getting out of school, it was like, yo, like, all right, what now? You know, I was yeah. like, I, I I love music so much. That was like music here's the thing, man. I, I just feel blessed and and lucky <laughs> to have found what I love to do in life at a young age because it takes a long time to get good at anything and it, and it, and it costs a lot in a number of ways. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like nothing just lands on your lap. Nothing is just like, if I just sit around here forever, maybe these opportunities will just land here. 
You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, maybe if I just upload this online, it'll sell a lot of records and I'll be on. Mm-hmm. Like, no. Yeah. Like, this, 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 it takes so much. And it was like, these music videos? Yeah. Like, I don't know if y'all know about, like, we, we, basically, a year and a half ago, I put out Must Be Nice, kind of just out of desperation. It was like, yo, we needed, a, we needed a way to pay rent and to get by to keep making the music so that I would have enough time to make this album and really give the album I wanted to give and have the proper setup and do all the music videos and every month when we would get that itunes check Mm -hmm. you know we would save it up and then save it up until we could do some music videos so when we shot let's get lost and far alone and almost famous and and been on that was me betting a hundred grand everything i had on myself like i hope this shit works (laughs) And uh, and any, any anybody could have taken that and just you know what I mean bought a bought a Beamer yeah. and bought a chain and just been a rapper and just I'm I'm telling you like I was you know what I mean like me my manager were paying ourselves like five hundred dollars a week just enough to pay rent and just eat food and keep recording and keep working and I'm just feeling lucky that I'm paying rent getting buy off music but we're just saving it up to make these moves to set up this mm-hmm. whole thing you yeah. know what I mean and then like making that bet to be like. Yo, I want this so bad, and I believe in the music that much that you can't tell me this is a dumb bet. Like I'm holding all the cards, bro. There's no way we lose. Like, yeah. You know, so. Damn, it feel good to see people up on it, huh? It's crazy. That's yeah. why it's like, man. We used to talk about this shit from day one. But like, you know, like, man, I want to be at this point. You know what I mean? I want to be able to tour. I want to have a bus. I want to, you know. But, and and it's like you have the confidence that. You know, you can do it, but until it happens, like, damn, like, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, you know, um, hip-hop, in my opinion, is the most in- inclusive genre of music. But unfortunately, we have a tendency to compare people to other people and stuff like that. Oh, uh, God. You know, no, but I'm saying, you know, and, and we don't have to, you know, drop names and stuff like that, but have you been feeling, you know, the, the, the comparisons? Of well, there's it? a lot of... I think, especially, there's a lot of simple people that, you know, would just look at appearance. Of course. And they would say, my skin is this color, so I'm going to compare him to this guy. Mm -hmm. He's got a good haircut. I'm going to compare him to this guy. And, you know, I mean, that just comes with the territory, man. Mm -hmm. Like, you know. And then, uh, I don't know. I mean, in in any creative field, it's almost necessary to sell something to be able to compare. Because... You know, some of you may be, you know, the diehard fans that have followed this from the jump and you have all the back catalog and you've been to multiple shows and bought merch, but everybody has it. You know what I mean? And and it's like when when pitching it to somebody new, you know, yo, yo, have you heard of this kid G Easy? Mm-hmm. Nah, what's his deal? Oh, he's the next Macklemore. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. He's like a mix of like Drake and you know what I mean? It's like you, you know what I mean, people just need things to be able to say like you know, and, and it's like, that just comes with territory. My mom was an artist, and she would tell me all the time about how she would have these opportunities to show her work in, in New York or something, and she wouldn't get it, because people would be like, I can't sell your work. You're not, you don't look like anybody else. Like, your work doesn't, you know, and, and, and she didn't get those breakthroughs or those, you know what I mean, that, yeah. that she may have missed or whatever, but she was like, I'm a weirdo, yeah. and my work's not like anybody else, you know, and it was like, you know. And you're not going to, you know, after this album, you're not going to drop us off and become some fashion model, some actor, something like that, right? You're going to keep making <laughs> hey, music? Hey, man, I'm trying to be Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> Fuck hip-hop. <laughs> so we, we we got some questions. And before, but before we go to the questions, I just wanted to know, you know, like, just just, just being a diehard hip-hop fan, you know, like, what are your what are your goals? And like, I, and, and it, it sounds like a cliché question, but for hip-hop artists, it's like, you know, do you do you like you know? I want to be the best rapper. You know, I'm, I'm gonna tear this this one's head off, and I, you know, like that type of thing. Or you know, like yeah. what are your goals? I mean, that's the fire inside of you. Mm-hmm. Hip hop is competitive, like yeah. we were talking about. You know what I mean? Like I want to be better than everybody. Here's the thing, man. Like some people, you gotta know who you are, though. You know, and that's 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 the way it all goes. Like you approach this competitively as like I want to be the best. But some people are just born with a gift, and some, you know, what I mean, everybody's different. It's like but I'm I never it, gonna be. But I hear it in the lyrics. I hear it in the lyrics. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. You I know hear what it I mean? In the lyrics. There's that fire inside of me, but it's also knowing, like, you know, I I I strive to make great music, you know, 
and, and be a great rapper and all around, a great performer, you know, everything. But it's like, I'm not, I'm not going to be Jadakiss or Big L, you know what I mean? It's like, you know who you are. Understood. So we got some questions from the audience. You stand up, say well, your name, where you from? Yo, Easy, what up, what up? It's Kenny D. Good. You know what I mean? I met you last night at your album release party for the first time. You know what I mean? And I asked you, like, how, do you, how, like, how did it feel to be there? Like at your own album release party, you know what I mean? Like an experience like that, and for you to be so humble, yeah. you know what I mean, and just kill it. It's it's weird, man. None of this is sunk in, and it's like moments pass so fast. Like like you can't hold on to anything. It's like it's you know, I feel like you 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 live experiences more so through memories and through like looking forward to something than you do actually in the moment. Because once it's here, it's gone. All you can do is enjoy it and live in it. But it's like I'm just here's the whole thing with this record is I would say this is my debut album and this has been 10 years in the works. I didn't spend 10 years working on this to have a big album release party in a first day or a first week sales or something like that. It's like you shouldn't be able to understand or fully like get it or appreciate it or like all the way, you know what I mean? Until it's like it's it's lasting effects is what, yeah. you know. You got to live like with this So album. it's like enjoy the moment, but ultimately it's like you always just keep things in perspective and just like, you know, long term. Yeah, raise your hand. The lights are bright up here. But last night was popping, though. Oh, hi. My name is James Chi, and I'm from Indiana. What up? Um, hey. Uh, I was wondering, are you ever going to work with Logic? Uh, yeah, he's a great dude. Logic is one of them dudes that's just a really good rapper. Mm -hmm. He's like, my, my God damn it, man, you're so fucking good at rapping. Man, shit. He's just born with a gift, man. It's like, I get jealous of that guy. Like, God damn. Yeah, yeah but you look better than him. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. get some ladies in this thing. Where's ladies at? Hi, I'm Carrie. Um, well, first I want to say congratulations on everything you've accomplished so far. Thank and you. I know you always talk about doing everything organic and stuff, but you get to that point where the business outgrows itself. Do you see yourself getting there now, like more than ever? Uh, here's the thing, like a perfect example of this is like, I used to design all my own merch and I would, uh, we had all our inventory in my living room in New Orleans at the place I was staying at. And what started as like one rack you know, with a row of t-shirts and once a week we would take like three packages to the post office and ship it to whoever was buying my merch, who the hell in the world, uh, became a full rack, you know, and, and trips to the post office every couple of days. To the point where fast forward a year and our living room was not a living room, it was like all merch racks on every corner and we would show up at the post office with just boxes and, 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 and forklifts would drop off merch at the front door and it's like, wow. yo, like, this literally outgrew my living room, like, we can't do this anymore. And then, you know, we had to get a, a, like a company to fulfill it and all that. And that happens. But at the end of the day, what matters to me is the philosophy and approach to the creative side of everything and just keeping creative control. And even as things scale up and the business grows and all that is like maintaining those core values that make you you. And, and that, a lot of that is the music, you know, it's like, you know, if the music's good, then that's all that should matter, you know, and that's, that's what I lose sleep over and care about the most. So, so you know, your core, have you kind of like, you know, solidified your core team, you know, in this time when, when all of the... I got the best the team in the world, mm -hmm. straight up. I got, I got the best team in the whole entire world. I, I would put that squad against anybody. And that's what matters because you can't do this on your own. I'm sorry, bruh. You can't. That's where you slip up. You need great people around you to everybody doing their part and everybody to inspire you and to everybody to push you and everybody doing their part and that's how great shit happens. And to take the forklifts out of your living room. Right. <laughs> Hands up. You got a lady in the front. Of Hi, I'm Maddie from What's up? Eastern Long Island, like the Hamptons. Hey, and Eastside Long Island in here. What's up? Woo. <laughs> um, I was just wondering when, if you have any idea when your next tour will be in America. <laughs> Um, I'm never touring again. It's probably going to be a reunion tour in 20 years. You just came off tour, right? Yeah. yeah. We just came back from Europe. That, that was crazy. That was my first time playing over there. Um, we'll, we'll go out in the fall. Yay! Shouts out to Jeremy. Get ready to book that thing. Hey, G, it's Joseph. Uh, I have a question. With your music videos from Run Around Sue all the way to, like, you know, um, do you think... Where does oh, sorry, where does um, all the concept and the creativity come from? Because each video is different in its own, 
and each video at the same time, I'm always like wowed. I'm like, you know, where did that creativity come from? Thank you, man. Uh, I don't know. I love music videos, man. I, I really, really, really enjoy getting to like, you know, bring ideas to life. And we got a great team. And um, here's the thing about music videos. I mean, this is really true in any creative field, but it starts with an idea. And, you know, it, 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 ideas can come from any of our, you know what I mean? Like, Anybody brings an idea forth and we think like, all right, that's a great idea. Let's flesh this out. And we all just get at the round table and just like work on them, you know, and say like, ah, this could be better. This could be better. And because the thing is, music videos are expensive, you know, and bringing them to life is expensive. But you have this freedom before you shoot to be able to mold that clay and reshape it. And when you shoot it, there's only so much you could do. You know what I mean? That, you know, so we just try to take hella time with every music video. I think half of that is because we pay for them ourselves. So I'm like, yo, if I'm gonna bet a hundred grand on this, it better be a safe bet, shit. Yeah. And uh, you know, and, and just trying to make every video unique and special. Cause the thing is, everybody can grab a 5D and make a music video now. So what's, you know, oh, have you seen the new so-and-so video? Nah, what is it? Oh man, he's like, you know, standing on a, you know, in front of a car with hella girls. All right, cool, you know. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, I, I, I just noticed with, your, with, noticed with your videos, there's a certain aesthetic and feel. You know, I'm not yeah. no, you know, video guy like that, but I noticed that you know there's a there's a feel when when one sees. Man, I got videos. the rawest videos in the game, bruh. Say where. Yo, what up, Jeezy? It's Dave Noodles. Did you just take the mic from her. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, giving yeah, her, yeah, giving yeah. it to him. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just I'm gonna give that it back. Have been player. <laughs> All right, cool. I just want to say thank you. I got to tour with Kurt Rockmore. Oh yeah. And I did the last 14 dates with you, and oh, hell yeah. this dude just shut it down. It was such an honor to be rolling with this I dude. I paid that guy to it. give me compliments. Right now. <laughs> So I just want to say thanks, and my girl had a question for you. Hell yeah. Hey, G. My boo put me on, and I've been, like, a major fan ever since. Like, dead on iTunes. Me and him listen to it all the time. And I just Thank wanted you. to ask you, um, which hip-hop artist, dead or alive, would you love to do a song with no matter what the cost? Man, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> uh, let me think. Let me think. I would want to do a song with I mean, Mac Dre. Yeah, yeah, Mac Dre would be crazy. Pac. You and Mac you know. Dre. Nah, so I would just, man. Because some of these guys is like, man. It's yeah. going to happen. The Nas thing is going to happen, but. Yeah, that'll be wild. That'll, man, that'll be a trip. Yeah. Well, you know what? I guess just to follow it up, you know, what, are, what would you say are some of your biggest musical influences? Uh, well, Nas is, you know, certainly, certainly up there. Uh, obviously, E40, Too Short, Mac Dre. Um, I'm a huge Drake fan. Kanye, Lil Wayne, Jay Z, Eminem, the greats, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yo, man, thank you for the time and the, and, and, and the 